What do Japan, the Philippines, Indonesia, and Fiji all have in common? Well, other than being island nations, it's possible that they could share some very ancient cultural and genetic connections in the latter mentioned countries clearly being of Austronesian stock, as I've discussed in an older video over the Austronesian world, but it's also been surmised by many experts in the past and in the present that the Japanese, who have so far yet to be concretely linked to any other ethno-linguistic group in Asia taxonomically, may have some links to many peoples of Southeast Asia and the Pacific, even if it isn't the most obvious. And it's actually starting to look like they might actually be right. Japan is one of the most intriguing, captivating, and historically relevant countries in all of the planet, despite being basically on the edge of the known world, with thousands of miles of sea separating the islands from the Americas to the west. But that hasn't stopped them from transforming from an isolated hermit kingdom into one of the single greatest industrialized nations and forces to be reckoned with in only a matter of generations, interacting with many of the surrounding nations, which has left some rather polarizing relations between them in the present day. It's considered quite possible that the Japonic and Koreanic families do indeed have a common ancestor from thousands of years ago, although this has yet to be proven or accepted by mainstream linguists. But other than comparing the roots, lexicon, and grammar of the two languages, the fact that the Yayoi, who originated from mainland Asia, traveling through the Korean peninsula to get to Japan, were the ones whose language became dominant on the home islands, is evidence that the Proto-Korean and Proto-Japanese were indeed related. This hypothesis is sometimes linked to many other ethno-linguistic groups in northern Eurasia, centered on the Altai mountain region of Siberia, containing the Mongolic, Turkic, Tungusic, and other Siberian languages within the Mega family, sometimes being branded as Altaic, also known as Trans-Eurasian, a highly disputed and controversial grouping, linguistically speaking, as it's considered dubious whether Korean and Japanese can even be considered to be related to Mongolian or the others, and it's even debated whether Proto-Mongol and Proto-Turkic share a common origin. However, it's needless to say that this theory has had major influence in historical fields of anthropology and history in Western circles, and even in Japan itself, as we'll get to later. In case people forgot, language family is actually very heavily linked to both culture, ancestry, and genetics, even though different splinter groups from the same family may fracture and mingle with other people groups of entirely different origins. It is true that we can actually trace migration patterns of ancient people through both linguistic, historical, and genetic analysis, the latter using both autosomal ancestry, meaning total genome, and haplogroups, which specifically show lines of descent or lineage. In Japanese history, typically two major people groups are specified in the past few thousand years in their country's records, that being the Yayoi, who as mentioned most likely originated in Korea or mainland Northeast Asia, and hence were possibly linguistically and genetically similar to these peoples, although further waves of migration by the Koreans would push out or assimilate the remaining Yayoi on the mainland, and a haplogroup analysis of Koreans and Japanese with a higher Yayoi concentration show a dominance of the paternal haplogroup O1b2 and O2. The other major historical group who preceded the Yayoi invasion, the Jomon, are derived from a similar Eastern Eurasian stock as the Yayoi, albeit with a much more isolated and specialized genome, which resulted in a major difference in appearance between the two, with the Jomon being noted as more squat, hairy, and robust, with accounts differing as to the pigmentation of their skin, possibly being partially descended from or related to ancient migrants from Siberia to the north. The Jomans and their modern descendants, the Ainu, and many ethnic Japanese throughout the islands overwhelmingly belong to haplogroup D, which is only found in major concentrations in two other populations in the entire world, and they're not even close to each other. That being the Tibetans and the natives of the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And as you may be noticing, the dark-skinned Andamanese have almost nothing in common with other Eurasians, genetically or linguistically speaking least of all the Japanese, and hence it's believed that these lineages must have split from each other tens of thousands of years ago with the migration of ancient settlers arriving in Japan carrying the D haplogroup well before any other people group arrived in the islands. Now, keep in mind, Jomon or Ainu ancestry and haplogroup D is found throughout ethnic Japanese and the major islands of the country, including the Ryukyuan archipelago in the far south, but is almost completely absent in the neighboring Koreans or Taiwanese, aboriginal or otherwise, 
and hence this is just more evidence for substantial gene flow into Japan for the past few thousand years, but not much backwards migration out of the region. Traditionally, historians thought of the ethnic Japanese, or Yamato, as being descended primarily from these two groups, Yayoi from the east and Jomon in the north, but evidence actually suggests a relatively recent migration from the south, possibly tying the Yamato to many people groups of Southeast Asia, but records are tentative at best. There's a major theory supported by many linguists that links the Austroasiatic, Kra Dai or Tai Kadai, Mong Mien, and Austronesian languages together in a massive conglomerate known as the Austric family, which again, highly controversial and has little support in Western circles, although is gaining traction in Southeast Asia. Once more, these hypothetical Altaic or Austric families are heavily scrutinized, with many Chinese linguists instead treating Mong Mien and Kra Dai as branches of Sino-Tibetan, but it is accepted that these ethno-linguistic groups are the native inhabitants of southern China before the expansion of the Han nation displaced them, with Austroasiatics settling mainly Southeast Asia as well as Western Maritime Southeast Asia, Thai peoples settling predominantly in the center of mainland Southeast Asia, and Austronesians spreading out to Taiwan before having one of the greatest expansions of all time, settling throughout Southeast Asia, the Pacific, and even Madagascar, and all of these groups intermixed with the previous populations to varying extents. Hence, if Austric peoples, especially Austronesians, manage to spread out, intermix with, and conquer such a large swath of territory to the south, some of which, such as Easter Island, ranking among the most remote locations on the planet, it's not so difficult to believe that some may have made their way northwards as well. Austronesian tribes were known to exist on the mainland of China hundreds of years after the Han conquest, with the Tonka of the Guangdong region hypothesized to be Austronesians who adopted the Chinese language. But remember, the Austronesian homeland of Taiwan is actually not that far from Japan, when including the Ryukyuan Islands. And when looking back thousands of years, it's been confirmed that Austronesian tribes from Taiwan reached the islands even before the Ayoi. If the Japanese islands were populated only from migrations from the north and east, you would expect Koreans to have greater Southeast Asian admixture, but they don't, with the Yamato having around 5-11% to Austronesian admixture in their genome, and you can see a higher affinity between the Yamato and Austronesian Taiwanese Aboriginals than other East Asians, especially for ethnic Ryukyuans such as those in Okinawa, and this has historically had a large impact both linguistically and culturally. Some of the oldest known Austronesian tribes to have inhabited Japan are a people group named by the Japanese as the Hayato or Kumaso, who inhabited the southernmost region of Kyushu, one of the smaller main islands in Japan that is connected to Taiwan by the string of Ryukyu Islands, and these people were known by the Yamato to be distinct from the Ainu or any other known people they had encountered native to the home islands, and were described at the time as a particularly violent and aggressive people, although to what extent this is true is unknown. It's unknown just when exactly the Hayato arrived in Japan, but seeing as to how they predated the Yayo expansion, the Hayato and other proto austric migrants likely had been pushing into Japan for at least 3,000 years, and studies have linked many cultural similarities between modern-day people of Kyushu and aboriginal people of Taiwan. The Hayato heavily resisted the Yamato rule that had taken over much of the rest of Japan, and it wasn't until the 8th century AD that the Hayato were finally subjugated by the Yamato, and their language quickly disappeared, and their cultural practices were assimilated by the mainstream society. So basically, we can trace back gene flow into the Japanese home islands through four or five major different waves of migration, stretching back many thousands of years, that being the original Proto-Australoid and or Proto-Eurasian peoples, the Jomon, the Yayoi, and different Austric migrants from Taiwan or Southeast China, and is rather unique for East Asia in that regard, being similar to how the British Isles were majorly impacted by Celtic, Anglo-Saxon, Norse, and Norman migration waves that compounded upon each other to form the modern nations we see today. Due to the extremely diverse origins of the Yamato people, some have even gone so far as to call Japanese a mixed language, with heavy influence from Chinese, Korean, and other unknown languages, similar to how English was heavily influenced by Latin, Norman, and Celtic languages. 
So looking at historical attitudes, during the imperial era, the Japanese were not entirely ethnic purists in the same way the Germans were, and encouraged a process of rapid assimilation for Koreans and Taiwanese, considering them similar enough to be accepted into the growing Japanese nation, and would especially target Aboriginal Formosan tribes in terms of Japanese education and conscription. And in fact, some of the last Japanese holdouts to surrender after the end of World War II were in fact of Taiwanese Aboriginal descent, having taken on Japanese names, culture, rituals, and practices. Many of these Taiwanese Aboriginals went to Japan for education and or military training, and were likely some of the first Austronesians to arrive in the islands since ancient times, although the Japanese were also heavily involved in the Austronesian-speaking region known as Micronesia. Due to the partial Papuan ancestry of the Micronesians, the Japanese did have a more strict policy of racial segregation than they did with the Koreans and Taiwanese during the colonial age, but there were thousands of cases of Japanese immigrants, almost all male, intermixing with the natives of the Mariana Islands, Marshall Islands, and Palau, with an astonishing 10-25% to of people in these territories today having partial Japanese heritage. And after World War II, many of these mixed individuals decided to go to Japan, although the bulk stayed behind. There are over a third of a million recent Austronesian descendants in the country of Japan today, predominantly of Filipino or Indonesian descent, and an even bigger number than this in Taiwan. So it's almost a sort of reverse migration after thousands of years of separation. So please let me know your thoughts on the surprisingly diverse history of the Japanese nation and the interesting waves of migration, including ancient Austronesians that have given rise to the people we see today. And for today's poll, let me know which ancient Japanese group you find to be the most interesting. As always, thanks for watching everyone. This has been Mason, and I'll see you next time.